Hi, welcome into my studio. I drew this lion cub in pastels a little while ago and on this video I'm going to show you how I did a nice easy underlayer underpainting using pan pastels. Now if you're unfamiliar with what pan pastels actually are, as you can see on the photograph, they're pastels that have been uh, ground up, they're a concentrated colour and they've been put in these um, small plastic pans. So you can use them in a different manner and actually mix the colours together just like paint and I'll show you that in a little while and they, they make great tools for uh, applications as well. So let's take a look at those. Now the tools come in many shapes and sizes, they're called soft tools and with these you can put the small spongy ends uh, on the tip of the uh, knife, the plastic knife, and you can make very fine marks with them. And they come in lots of different shapes as well. But when I'm doing underlayers, and because I use pastel matte paper, which has a, a bit of a texture to the surface, it can break down the surface on those small tools if, if you're quite harsh and rough with them, as I am on the underlayer. So I prefer to use these other soft tools and they're uh, much more durable, they're more of a finger size and shape and you can squeeze them together as I'll show you to create small marks as well. So I use these much more frequently. Now as I mentioned they can be mixed like paint so I've got a small um, bit of print, print of paper, just inkjet paper on that bottom right hand side. You can see I'm dipping into the pans and actually mixing the colours together, lightening, darkening them just on that printer paper. Now this part of the video is obviously uh, from my long video and it's quite a way into it but I just wanted to show you very briefly the mixing process. Now for those that want to see a really in-depth long version um, of this drawing and to see everything that I do in it, that's available on my Patreon art channel. Okay, so I've got the reference photo on the left from wildlifereferencephotos.com and on the right hand side I've got my pastel matte paper, I've got my drawing on there. I've done a bit of a tonal uh, effect on the drawing so I've just used a black pencil, color, uh, pastel pencil and a white just to show where my lights and darks are. So that helps me with my underlayer map. And now I'm using that technique you just saw to mix colors with pan pastels. I'm using the soft tool that's around about the size of a finger shape to begin the blocking in process. Now what I'm after here is kind of a, a mid-tone underlayer. So I'm not putting in my darkest darks yet. I'm not putting in my lightest lights yet. I'm just getting in a nice solid underlayer. Now obviously the benefit really with pastels is that we can really easily put lights on top of darks as you can see I'm doing now and we can also put dark on top of light and as long as we don't fill the tooth of the paper we can keep going back and forth with that and as we build layers or as I build layers I increase the detail and the refinement of each layer but we all need to start somewhere and that's where I start on this under layer to get the basics down in place first. Details will come later so we don't have to worry about that at all. So you can see how I'm squeezing that sponge together if I want a, a smaller mark when I'm working in a smaller area. If I want to more broadly broadly stroke on it I don't squeeze it at all so I can you know I can easily refine the shape of uh, this sponge and I'll probably use just the one sponge to put in the whole of the blocking in under layer. Now as I mentioned these sponges are very durable they don't wear out easily at all in fact I've never worn one of these out and all I do to clean them I've got a microfiber cloth in my lap and I just wipe it across it a few times until virtually no color comes off but I do usually keep one sponge for dark and you can see how dark this one looks and I keep one for the lighter tones. They can also be washed in uh, water as well if you want to get it really clean but I've never had to do that myself. Just wiping in a microfiber cloth is sufficient to get enough of the colour off that it doesn't go contaminating any others. And obviously you've got two ends to it and you can flip it over as well so there's uh, quite a lot of 
of sponge that you can use. You can see as well I'm going in the fur growth direction just as I would when I was putting uh, details in perhaps with pencils I'd be making the strokes in the fur direction I'm doing the same thing here and that's a good habit to get into to always be applying whether it's paint or pastels in that fur direction and you can see as well as I'm just refining slightly I'm dipping into other colors so I'm adjusting my mix just like I would with paints I'm not having to go searching for other color pastel sticks to layer on top I can really just mix it on that inkjet paper now under this eye section I'm going quite dark I know I can overlay uh, lighter tones on there as well and if anything I'm airing on the side of going a bit darker than the finished artwork is going to be because if you remember when we put a light or for a light mark to actually show up it's got to be something darker really underneath it so if you think of the example of um, white paper and this is why I use a toned uh, paper if this paper was white and I was trying to put a white mark on it it just would not show up at all so I need something darker underneath. A really big uh, deal for me was starting to use toned paper and when I was doing my oil paintings starting to tone the canvas all of a sudden things became much much easier to work with. So I'm going a bit darker under this eye section as well and I don't have to be super accurate at this stage. I'm going to probably put four, five, six layers on top but some of this will show through. I'm squinting my eyes quite a bit as I'm looking at the reference photo and another way of doing that is to actually blur it in an image editor for these early stages because you don't want to be concentrating on details. You want to be concentrating on the large masses. You want to be concentrating on the tone. So that's the lightness or the darkness and the basic color. Don't worry about being spot on with the color. The basic color really will do at this stage. So I'm just going to speed this up a little bit so you can see how, exactly how it's going to develop.
So as you can see, it's really not too complicated using the pans, especially if you're coming from a background uh, with paints. You really um, find it very intuitive that you can mix those colors. You don't have to purchase lots and lots of different colors either because you can mix. You can lighten and darken with white and black so you can get a tint and tone out of it. So they really are very cost effective when you look at it that way and they last a super long time. I've never had to buy one color twice yet and I use them very frequently on my artwork. So just blocking in the ears as well. And when you're looking at the difference now between the reference photo and my uh, blocking in, you can see I'm not really super accurate at all. The accuracy, the details will come later. So don't overthink the blocking in process. We're just getting in a basic color and tone. But another thing, don't put too much pastel down at this stage either. Remember, all papers, even pastel mat, has got a limit to how much the tooth will hold. Once that's filled up completely, then you're going to really struggle to get any pastel on the upper layers. You would have to use something extremely soft, and even then the pastel would basically be just floating on the surface. So, so what I like to do, I use the pans very often for the under layer because the sponge tools, these soft tools, are really pushing the pastel into the paper surface and I'm not putting on too much at all. And then once I've done this stage, what I normally do then, I just use a clean fingers and I rub it into the surface of the paper and that's really pushing that under layer in even further. Not a lot will come off on my fingers and because pastel mat holds the pastel really well, it doesn't just go smudging out and blending and blurring into each other. It'll look pretty much just the same, but it will be pushed into the surface of the paper. Now I've added some black to my mix so that I can get some of these darker tones in place. And you can see after just probably about 25-30 minutes worth of uh, drawing or painting or however you'd want to call it um, with the pan pastels, it's really starting to get a nice solid looking under layer. And for me it's much much faster than I would be with uh, pencils, pastel pencils for sure and also it's even faster than I would be putting it on with the sticks.
all I'm doing now is just adding a few more touches here and there but that's pretty much all I'm really going to do for the under layer so you can see if I wanted to now I could start using the smaller um, pan pastel tools and do virtually the whole drawing like that and if you see my cougar um, drawing on YouTube or my patreon channel you see how far I sometimes take the uh, artwork with the pan pastels all depends on the subject in this case I just use it as a basic underlayer like this before I started to come in with pencils the pastel pencils and they layer perfectly on top of these pan pastels and I really managed to achieve then a high degree of detail I wanted to see how detailed I could get this piece especially because I was working quite large so I hope you've enjoyed this video as I said if you're looking for a extremely long version of this to see all my tips secrets and uh, ways that I get all that detail on top then that's available on my patreon art channel I've got over a thousand members on there now so hope to see you there real soon If you're looking for even more great art sources, I've really got you covered. First off, I've got a Patreon channel that's been going well over a year or so, packed with around about 50 or more videos and new ones every month. Lots of the videos are uh, many hours long, so you can see they're really, really in-depth. Subjects such as um, turtles, birds, elephants, big cats, you name it, it's on there. So that's my Patreon channel. And also on that Patreon channel, before I go on to something else, I've got a secret Facebook group. So only the members are actually on there. It's the most supportive and friendly Facebook group that I've ever seen. I know I'm biased, but it really is. We've got uh, four or 500 members on there and they all help each other. So that's a great added bonus that comes free with it. Also you get line art every month as well and we've just designed a brand new companion website for it so if you've joined other patrons and uh, channels and you found it very very difficult to navigate around we got this free website that comes with it all the videos are now just a single click away couldn't be any easier than it is I've also got my site jasonmorgan.co.uk lots of tutorial videos DVD discs and downloads on there and if you're struggling for reference photos for your art projects, I've got some of those too. I've got 900 plus on my website, wildlifeart-online.com and they will be copyright free for you so you can paint and draw from them and sell your work with no copyright worries whatsoever. So hope you like those extra resources and I'll see you all again real soon.